Hey everybody, welcome back to Drug Talk. As always, I'm your host, Garrett Campbell. In today's video, we're going to be discussing a medication known as erythromycin. Now, before I talk about the medication itself, just keep in mind that this channel is for information purposes only and not to be used as a source for recommendations for your personal health care. Now, during this presentation, we'll discuss the mechanism of action or how this medication works, indications or reasons we would prescribe erythromycin to a patient, followed by contraindications or reasons we would not be able to give this medication to a patient. We'll then touch on examples of dosing and then finish it off with side effects. I've put together some slides to go over this information. Let's just jump right into it. So first, we'll discuss the mechanism of action or how this medication works. So erythromycin is a macrolide antibiotic. It inhibits protein synthesis by binding to the 50S subunits of the bacterial ribosome in susceptible organisms. In terms of indications or reasons we prescribe erythromycin to a patient, we may see it used in the treatment of acne or for prophylaxis in bacterial endocarditis. Chlamydia infection may be treated with erythromycin, as well as impetigo and Legionnaire's disease. We may see it used to treat pertussis, as well as respiratory tract infections. And there are also some other indications not listed here on this list. In terms of contraindications or reasons we would not be able to prescribe erythromycin to a patient, well, we wouldn't use this medication which, with HMG-CoA reductase inhibitors, like statins, that are extensively metabolized by CYP3A4. So examples of these would be lovastatin or simvastatin. We also wouldn't give this medication to a patient who had a hypersensitivity to erythromycin or to any other component of the formulation. Now for some examples of dosing with erythromycin. So in the treatment of acne, if a patient was using the gel formulation, they would apply it to the affected area topically once or twice daily. If they were using the ointment, the pads, or solution, they would apply twice daily after skin is thoroughly cleansed and padded dry. In the treatment of a chlamydia infection, we may see 500 milligrams given orally four times daily, or 666 milligrams every eight hours for at least seven days. In the treatment of impetigo, we may see 250 milligrams orally four times daily for seven days. As with all medications, there are some side effects or adverse reactions that patients may experience while using erythromycin, so we'll go over some of those here now. Some common side effects would be diarrhea, a loss of appetite, nausea, stomach cramps, or vomiting. Some serious side effects would be a prolonged QT interval, Steven Johnson syndrome, toxic epidermal necrolysis, Clostridium difficile colitis, pancreatitis, hepatitis, and finally anaphylaxis or autotoxicity. All right, everybody, that's all we're going to talk about today with erythromycin. As always, I'm very thankful you took the time to come by and watch one of my videos. If you found the information valuable and you'd like to help grow this channel, remember you can like the videos, share the videos, and most importantly, subscribe to the YouTube channel. There's also some links in the description you can check out as well. That's it for today. Take care.